threat of death and authorities are being blamed for failing to protect them. Bloggers and activists in Bangladesh have been the target of a recent spate of brutal and horrific murders. An Al-Qaeda affiliate actually claimed responsibility for the bloody killings of two men in the country. On Monday, the victims hacked to death in an apartment in Dhaka. One of them was the editor of the country's first LGBT magazine. He also worked for the U.S. government agency, USAID. Dr. Imran Sarkar is a Bangladeshi blogger and secular activist. He has received death threats himself. He joins me now live via Skype from Dhaka. And, Doctor, thanks for doing so. You know, we've seen reports of an actual hit list of people. In fact, there's been more than one in recent years in Bangladesh. Just describe for us how serious the issue of Islamist extremism is in Bangladesh today. Actually, uh, we're passing very difficult time right now, you know, one by one when uh, the uh, secular activist, blogger, publisher and the academician been killed, uh, we saw our government is doing nothing without just uh, giving uh, some spaces or briefing. Uh, you know, in some cases we saw government somehow justified the killings, when in, we saw the uh, killing killer group, especially, you know, here in Bangladesh, the killer group have two faces, one in public funds and another is underground funds. So, when we saw government is supporting the public front and saying these are their friends, and uh, the killers group, uh, that is underground groups, is killing uh, simultaneously and government is doing nothing. And even, you know, in the last cases, when uh, uh, Julhas Mannan have been killed, uh, we saw our uh, minister, that is uh, home minister, saying uh, this uh, activism like LGBT, supporting LGBT or gay uh, activism, gay rights, uh, that is not supported in the society. Uh, I mean, that somehow justified the killers. Yeah. It, it, that, exactly, and, and a lot of people have said there's been a, a, a tepid response from the government and, you know, the, the, as you point out, warnings, in fact, from the government to the secular community not to agonise, uh, antagonise anyone from the Home Minister, the Prime Minister even. And, and so you believe that that gives a form of uh, implied impunity, if you like, to those who act in the name of Islam this way? Actually, uh, absolutely true. They are giving that impunity and, uh, you know, the, the deep-rooted culture of impunity is harassing us and this is very harmful for this society. Right now, when we saw uh, the people are going to for protest against injustice or this type of killing, uh, when we are uh, fighting in the street, we saw our government is uh, also even uh, arresting people, those are critic of government or uh, demanding justice for the killing. So, uh, that's how the killers uh, got that sense of security uh, that they are doing operation uh, one or two in a day or in a week they are doing more operation uh, we know we see the frequency of the operation have rises and they are frequently ferociously doing these killings many bloggers liberals secularists have have fled the country they're they're in places like germany and elsewhere uh, why aren't you with them aren't you afraid for your own safety Actually, uh, 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 I'm very afraid for uh, the countries right now, the security, especially, you know, the my security or individual security is not r uh, right now important. Uh, uh, we are just concerned about our national security. When we saw uh, we, the people of Bangladesh, fought for our liberation and democracy, and we are seeing uh, we are going to succeed a failed state, we have no way without fighting these evil groups, groups, especially the violent militants group. So, that's why we are uh, not leaving the country, and uh, uh, I think we should have to be united to fight these evil groups. Uh, very, no other alternative like that. Very briefly, I just wanted to ask you this. I mean, do you think the government is not endorsing uh, Islamic extremism, but their reformism because there could be repercussions politically for them. Uh, yes, absolutely, as because I can ask the uh, interest of the government as because they are not cordial to arrest the killers. When you always see they are passing time and covering, covering up one story by another, and we see the killers even fled, uh, flew away. And uh, today, even the law enforcement saying the killers of Obijit Roy already left the country. Then actually, we have the question about uh, whether the 
government is politically interested to uh, bring these pillars in justice or not? I have the question and I am very worried. Uh, actually, government is not cordial. So, yeah. government have to uh, fight, at first take decision, whether uh, uh, a political decision they will bring these pillars in justice. And it will have to leave it there. Imran Saka, thanks so much. A uh, very brave man in the face of all of this. Appreciate your time. Uh, Tom Malinowski leads US government policy on global human rights and democracy. He joins me now from the State Department. You know, I, and thanks for doing so. You, you know, you have a staff member of the US mission, an employee of USAID, hacked to death, just the latest, as we've been saying, in a long list. What is the US doing about this? Well, as you said, this is the latest in a, in a long line. There have been about three dozen of, uh, of these cases. And Sulhaj, the, the wonderful young man who was, was murdered uh, most recently, I think has, has really focused the attention of the government of Bangladesh and of uh, the international community as to what's going on uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, we have uh, offered uh, the government of Bangladesh in the past uh, assistance in terms of investigating these crimes. The FBI has in the past offered uh, that assistance. Uh, we have reached out to um, folks who may be vulnerable, uh, who may be at risk, and offered them uh, direct emergency uh, assistance to, uh, if they so choose, to get them to safety or to help them find safety uh, within uh, Bangladesh. Uh, and we are uh, talking to the government of Bangladesh at a, at a very high level uh, this week about uh, what uh, more we can do to support their efforts uh, well, to bring these people to justice. What, the thing is, that, you know, and, and, and that's admirable, what the U.S. is saying, death in their own country. But the question really is, what about the government? What pressure are you putting on a government that, you know, one article on CNN.com says Bangladesh's leaders are coddling the killers and chastising the dead? And, uh, the, the, I mean, there's been, I think, one arrest after all of these killings. The, the, the accusation is they're encouraging it by inaction. I, I think that they are recognizing that this is not just a threat to a few individuals, but it's a threat to the, the traditions of tolerance and diversity that have characterized Bangladesh since its founding. It's a threat to everybody in Bangladesh who is working for human rights, who is working for pluralism. And uh, as such, I, I think that there there is a... Uh, I would say a new focus within the government of Bangladesh on the need uh, to deal uh, with this problem, not to blame the victims, but to go after the groups that have openly, brazenly claimed responsibility for these killings. And, and Bangladesh, of course, historically uh, secular, but you now have this battle between secularism and, and Islamism. You know, John Kerry, and you, you alluded to this. pride with which Bangladeshis guard their traditions of tolerance, peace and diversity. Given these attacks and the much criticized official responses to them, do you think those traditions, tolerance, peace and diversity, are being protected in Bangladesh by the government? I, I think those traditions are being attacked uh, in what seems to be a uh, depraved con competition between Al-Qaeda and ISIL uh, to prove uh, how terrible they are. And I, I think this is a very high stakes moment for the government and the people of Bangladesh. This is a moment where people need to come together despite the very real political differences that exist within Bangladesh to stand up to a group of people that are threatening everything that Bangladesh has achieved since its independence. And we will be there to support them uh, as they do that. But again, I've got to come back to the government. I mean, there have been a string of this. This, this was happening back in 1999, but there's been a, a string in the last year or two, uh, an uptick. Again, the government, there's no arrests, there's no prosecutions, nobody's being held to account. And in fact, you've got the Prime Minister and the Home Minister saying things like, well, don't antagonise people by, you know, you know talking about uh, atheism or talking about uh, 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 gay or LGBT issues. This is the government saying this. Is that the right attitude to be taking if you want to protect these people? The right attitude is to go after the people who are committing these crimes. Obviously, uh, nobody should be blaming the victims. The victims are everybody in Bangladesh who stands up for tolerance and pluralism uh, and, and the rule of law. There have been professional
protesters killed. There have been religious leaders from every single religious community uh, in the country. It's not just against uh, people who are atheists or, or ultra-liberal, whatever that may mean. Um, it's a threat to absolutely everybody. Um, we, you know, we are hearing from the government of Bangladesh a renewed sense of determination to go after uh, the who are actually responsible. We have offered our assistance. The time has come to act. And uh, a lot of people hoping to see that. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on, Tom Malinowski, uh, leading U.S. government policy on global human rights and democracy. Thanks so much and our sympathies for the loss of your staff.